I'm gonna put it on my YouTube channel. I'm gonna be. Why do you think he knows like this again instead of the other way? The other way? Um, because I wanted to start adding stuff to YouTube again, just because like people are asking me for notes all the time, and I want to be able to give them like a link in case you're gone for a day, or in case you're at home and you don't know what to do. Okay. Uh, anyway. Okay, so we're going to talk about tangent lines today. We talked about these a tiny, tiny bit uh, last week. Um, we were supposed to talk about them more, but I kind of balked because it seemed like you guys were getting a little overwhelmed with them. And so I decided that we were going to circle back to them today. Uh, so we're going to talk a little more about tangent lines. And today's assignment is going to be kind of a, a review assignment that's going to throw a lot of derivative stuff together. There's no limits on today's assignment. It's all um, <coughs> derivatives, um, but it's going to have some tangent lines thrown into just to kind of add some flavor to it. Um, but there's only like four questions about tangent lines, so it's not that bad. Um, so what a tangent line is, is it's a line that touches, touches, a graph in only one point. point. If it touches the graph in two points, it's called a secant, which is a word that we used in pre-calculus. Um, secant is the inverse of the cosine, um, but it also is, refers to a line that touches a graph in two places. A tangent is a line that touches a graph in only one point. So like, say that we have some graph here, I'm just going to create a graph out of nothing. Say it looks like this. And I have a point. A line that would be tangent to the graph at that point would touch the graph at that one point and then never again. All right? That's a tangent line. This line right here is tangent. And we'll call this function here f of x. It's tangent to f at point, we'll call the point, I don't know, p, at point p. I'm trying to think of a funny letter. For some reason, p is the only letter that sounded funny in my head. Um, uh, is q funnier than p? <laughs> Probably not. 25. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So, how you would actually. It's tangent to the graph F at point P. So, this line here is tangent to the graph of F at point P. The, this is graph F. And this line is tangent to graph F at point P. So the graph that's tangent to it will change. Like if I had a different point, if I had point, um, say this is point S, the line that would be tangent to this would be different. It would be, sorry, it's a bad tangent line. It would be something like that. A line tangent here, say this is point T, would look like that. So the tangent lines would change as you're changing the point that you're looking at your point of tangency. Kind of, sort of? Yeah. All right. So let's say that we have um, a function here. So I'm going to start relatively easy, and then I'll do something from what we were doing yesterday, so something that would require either the product or the quotient rule. So let's do something relatively easy first, though. Let's say we have a function uh, g of x that's equal to x to the fourth plus Okay, so the point of tangency here, as it changes, um, depending on which point you're looking at, your line that's tangent to the graph at that point is going to change. So like if you're looking at the point P, your line that's tangent at point P is this one. Yeah. If you're looking at point S, then this would be the line that's tangent at point S. If you're looking at point T, then this would be the line that's tangent at point T. <laughs> so depending on which point you're looking at, your line of tangency 
is going to change. Even though S is going to touch it twice? So like S would only touch this one once. Oh, yeah, it'll touch it eventually, yes, but it's, we're looking at just a small area. Oh, okay. So like this function might eventually turn back around, and P might end up touching it twice, too. Oh, okay. We're just looking at like a small area. Okay. Good question, though. Thank you. All right, so let's look at g of x. We'll say g of x is x to the fourth plus 3x to the third plus 2x. And, oh, geez, i got to think for this for a second. Um, let's do, uh, my brain is right. Let's do plus 1. And we want to find the line that is tangent at um, 1. Uh, five. I think that's a point that's on the graph. No, no. <laughs> Seven. Sorry. Your homework's actually going to work out, I promise. It's when I try to make up stuff on the fly that it doesn't work out. I mean, you could just use one off the homework. I absolutely could. Wouldn't hurt my no. I, it would not, I know. It wouldn't. Okay. So here's the thing. Here's how you here's how you work this out. Step number one. Find the derivative of the function. Find the derivative of the function. Derivative of function. All right. So this function is pretty easy to find the derivative of because it's all pluses, so we just find the derivative of each piece individually, and then it's all just plus. So x to the fourth, the derivative of that would be what? 4x to the third. 4x to the third. And then 3x to the third would be? 9x squared. Nine x squared. And then 2x would be? And then the, the 1 is going to turn into 0, so it just goes away. All right. So that's g prime of x. Right? You guys all with me on this? Okay. So step number two, you're going to substitute in the x-coordinate from the point. So the x-coordinate in this case is 1. So I'm going to substitute 1 in here for x in each of these places. So 4 times 1 to the third plus 9 times 1 to the second plus 2. So this is 4 plus 9. Okay, so 15. This is the slope of the tangent line. All right, cool. Now I have the slope of the tangent line, and I have a point that the line is going to go through. So if I want to find the equation of the tangent line, I have the slope, and I have the point. I just need to do either y equals mx plus b, or that other point slope equation I just gave you guys last chapter. Oh, great. If you want to do y equals mx plus b, you can. I'm going to do y minus 7 equal to 15 times x minus 1. So this is going to be y equals 15x uh, minus 8. And then here's your line, the equation of your line of tangency. Three. Find that line. Yo. Did I make a mistake? No. Did I do too many steps in my head? Am I trying too hard to show you guys that this is the better way of doing it than y equals mx plus b? Yeah. Am I trying too hard? <laughs> okay. That is actually. You should know how to do it. I've I've been trying to convince you of that for years now. That's probably true. It's probably true. We talked about change the other day, how you don't want to change. Um, 
Okay, so let's take a look at another example here. This is a very right-wing community. <laughs> it is a very right-wing community, that's true. Um, anybody says anything about coal. Ooh. Oh, God. <laughs> what did you say about coal? I didn't say. I said it's great. <laughs> coal is awesome. We should use more of it. We should have coal-powered cars. <laughs> Absolutely, it does. All right. Okay. I hey, I'm in favor of coal. Good lord, dude. I am not. I'm not Ken Bone. I'm not the guy who asked that question. It's just be. It's just. I think it's just because he looked weird and he had a strange voice. Do, do you guys, did you guys see? He has like 50,000 followers on Twitter now. He has a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The last night he had 50,000. And, okay, so, and also Stephen Colbert did a whole song about him. I don't know. Hashtag Who? Ken Bone is trending on Twitter. I just don't understand. Who is Ken So on the debate on Sunday night, they, they let, it was a town hall format, yeah. which, mean, which meant half the questions were asked by people in the audience. One of the people in the audience is a guy named Ken Bone, who was wearing... Uh, a red cardigan with a matching red tie and a white button-up shirt. Ken Bone was a, um, a, a stocky gentleman um, with, with a mustache um, and a, a high-pitched voice. I'll show you a picture of Ken Bone. This is still recording. <laughs> No, it just that's Ken Bone. All of these are Ken Bone. Because he asked a question about essentially coal, and th that's it. That's what all. Did, what did Hillary have to say? Well, well Hillary said that well, we. Can you go back to the picture real quick? Oh my gosh. You were looking at my face, dude. Tell Ken Bone. <laughs> Ken Bone looks like the guy who wows his finger on the road, a bunch of donuts, so don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, shh, quiet. All right. It's not a point, so. <laughs> okay, shh, quiet. Now, the other thing we're going to have to do. So. Let's look at one that's more complicated. <laughs> yes. So let's say that we have a function f of x. So this is one that's going to have to use the quotient rule. So f of x is equal to x squared divided by x plus 1. And we want to find where the tangent line is horizontal. Okay. So, to find where the tangent line is horizontal, so if it's if a line is horizontal, what kind of slope does it have? What's <coughs> Yeah, so a line that's horizontal has a slope of 0. So the first thing we want to do is find the derivative of this function, and then we want to set the derivative equal to 0 and then solve for that. And then okay, I just plug a zero into that equation. You, you can't because that's not that has nothing to do with the slope of the tangent line. You have to find the derivative first. I, I was just asking. You, well, because it has nothing to do with the, the slope of the tangent line. I'm, I'm telling I'm telling you. All right. So first we got to find the derivative here. So top is f, bottom is g, and so we're going to use the uh, quotient rule that we learned yesterday. So off to the side, I'm going to write out what f prime is. So f prime is 2x. And g prime is zero. not zero, one. one. So uh, in the numerator, it's f prime times g minus g prime times x. So 2x times x plus 1 minus 1 times x squared. And then this is all over g squared. So x plus 1 times x plus 1. Do you guys remember from algebra 1? x squared plus x squared plus 2x plus 1. 
Put the big brains on James. All right, so I'm going to simplify all this stuff up here. So this is going to be 2x squared minus x squared, which is x squared, plus 2x, all over x squared plus 2x plus 1. And I'm going to set this equal to 0. Because I'm looking for where this is going to be horizontal, so I'm looking for where the, this is going to be equal to zero. So, uh, you think it's going to be one? So let's actually just let's try your guess here. If I put zero in here, you have to put zero in, right? Well, if I put zero in, so this is going to be zero over one. So zero could be an answer, yeah. Where else is it going to be equal to zero? Four. If I put in four? <laughs> okay. So hold on. It's only going to be equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero because it's a fraction. Right. So negative two squared is four. And then two times negative two is negative four. So zero and negative two. So two Yeah. How do you know how many so when there's a square involved, you could have as many as two. It has to do with the power of the of the variable. If there's so is that your answer? Yeah, these are the two places where your um, oh where it's horizontal. Yeah. yeah, these are the two places where your tangent line is horizontal, zero and negative two. Kind of sorta. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to pass out your assignment. We'll go through part of it together.